Hi, I'm Sarah Mueller, a reporter with Forbes. I'm here at the Lincoln Dinner with candidate Larry Elder. Larry, thank you for coming back with us. Now, you talked about a lot of things tonight, a lot of things you've been campaigning on, the same plot issues. Um, what do you feel like got through to voters tonight that you made sure you wanted them to hear? Well, I wanted them to know about my background, why I feel the way I feel about the country. And I talk a lot about my father, who, uh, as you and I have talked about in the past, never knew his biological father. Uh, his mother was illiterate and threw him out of the house at the age of 13. My dad, uh, when I was growing up, had two full-time jobs cleaning toilets, cooked for a family on the weekend to make additional money, went to night school to get his GED, and then went to night school to learn how to operate a restaurant. So my dad then started a small cafe. Uh, and then when he retired, he owned that property, property next door, plus the home that's still in our, in our family. And I tell that story to show you what you can do in America under very, very harsh obstacles. He grew up in the Jim Crow South in Athens, Georgia, well before Brown versus Board of Education, well before the Civil Rights Act of 64, uh, and yet he was able to be successful. That's why I have very little patience for the message Democrats are peddling to a lot of people of color, and that is you're a victim, you're oppressed. It's nonsense. It's the greatest country in the world. And if you believe in yourself and believe in American values, you're going to be just fine. That's why I tell that message. And I think it struck a chord with some of the people who were in the auditorium. I got a standing ovation, as you, as you probably saw. And one of the things you addressed was also education. You called out Biden. You also called out uh, Governor Newsom for putting his kids in private school. And Barack Obama. And why do you feel like you were needed to talk about Newsom when uh, that was an election you had just last year? Well, I wasn't talking about Newsom. I was talking about the fact that the elites in the Democratic Party oppose school choice while they send their own kids to private school. I think it's a contradiction. Uh, when Michelle uh, Obama was raised, uh, she, her mother, went through some sort of machinations to make sure she went to a better uh, elementary school and middle school than the one that's nearest to her neighborhood. She got on a bus and went 90 miles away to go to a better high school than the one in her neighborhood. Today we call that school choice, yet the Democrats oppose school choice uh, that would give kids in the inner city a better opportunity for a better education uh, and better graduation rates. I find it completely hypocritical uh, and offensive to me, and that's why I, I want to call out the elites. Um, there was a study done some years ago where government school teachers with school-aged kids, Sarah, were asked, where you send your own kids? And nationwide, 10% of us have our kids in private school. Around 6% of black families do. 49% of Philadelphia public school teachers with school-aged kids put their own kids in private schools. So it turns out the people that know the schools the best aren't putting their own kids in it. So it seems to me that's pretty hypocritical. And I want to call it out because, as you well know, the Democrats have somehow gotten black people to vote for them to the tune in recent years of almost 90 percent. Even though the first step towards leaving poverty to make sure you finish high school, one where presumably you can read, write, and compute at grade level. Who is in the op who's, who's become an obstacle for that uh, pathway to success? The Democrats. That's why they need to be called out. That's why I did it. Somebody who got booed off stage tonight was Will Hurd. Um, another thing we had was Vivek was uh, also got a standing ovation. You have a lot of dense competition here, ranging from different uh, different places in the country. Not only that, but also different issues. How do you feel like you can compete among them currently, where you're at in the polls? I reject the premise of your question. I don't have dense competition. My competition is the Biden Harris administration. Uh, that's the target. And when I ran for governor. When I was given a chance to make comments about the other replacement rivals, I didn't do that. I said because the target is Gavin Newsom. The target is what he's been doing uh, to the state of California. The target is Biden-Harris, what they've been doing to the borders, what they've done to gas prices, what they've done to because of inflation, uh, their opposition to school choice. They're the target. We have a deep bench, uh, meaning Republicans. Any one of these candidates would be superior to what we have right now in the White House. Another thing that a lot of people are talking about are the 40,000 donors that you need to have to get on stage. Where are you at currently with that? Roughly, I'm about halfway there. Uh, as you pointed out, I need 40,000 individual donors. You can go to my website, LarryElder.com, and you can contribute as little as $1. Let me say this about that criterion. Some of the candidates are offering a $20 gift certificate for a $1 donation. Another one is offering a free concert for a $1 donation. Another one is providing a commission for prospective donors to go out and get other prospective donors. It seems to me that makes a mockery of the whole idea of why you have this criterion in the first place. I understand the idea that you don't want anybody, everybody who operates a hot dog stand who wants to run for president to get up there on the debate stage. But when the former vice president, Mike Pence, is having difficulty reaching the criterion, it seems to me that maybe the RNC ought to rethink this. It looks like some of that tactic, though, is working. For example, Doug Burgum um, is also getting the necessary donors to make the stage. 
Um, is this not a tactic, obviously, that you would approach? Well, um, apparently it's legal. Uh, I'm, I'm doing it, Sarah, the revolutionary way. I'm asking donors for their support. Now, let's say you don't make the stage. Is there any chance that you would drop out at that point? There's, there's no plan B, there's only plan A. My plan B is to make plan A work. And I'm working very hard to get the 40,000 donors. We're on track to do that. I will see you in Milwaukee. When I get up there, game on, hold my beer. Is there any chance that there will be a cutoff date or a time that, or a place in the polls that you need to reach in which you would decide to drop out? One more time, my goal is to make the debate in Milwaukee. Uh, you have to have at least 1% uh, in the polls by August 21 and 40,000 individual donors. I intend to meet that criteria. I will see you in Milwaukee.